Sophia Beltran, I'm the Executive Director of Disability in Action, Center for Independent Living. There are no qualifiers other than the fact that you come and say, this condition that I have is keeping me from doing something that I need to do every day. I think a lot of times what people think about when they talk about disability would be someone that, that has IDD, um, an intellectual disability, or they're obviously in a wheelchair, or they're blind, or they're deaf, and we serve all those populations. But that doesn't necessarily mean that someone doesn't have a hidden disability. If you were to walk down the street, you wouldn't necessarily know somebody had a limitless. You wouldn't know that they had depression or bipolar or schizophrenia and how these conditions can affect your activities of daily living. We want people to be as independent as they can be. So our job is to follow them as long as they need us. They come in, they set goals. They say, you know, I, I want to find a job. I've worked in the oil field for 30 years. My shoulders are completely shot. I can't do that anymore, but what am I going to do now? I don't have training in anything else. And we've had lots of folks who came and got retraining um, just by volunteering at the center. And I'll tell you, I just thank God every day for our volunteers. They are just worth their weight in gold. We have some fabulous volunteers. So as happy as I am when we see people come in, I'm happy to see them go because that means they don't need us anymore. Everybody that works in the center either has a disability themselves or has a family member who has a disability. We're kind of a one-stop shop. We'll help you make those phone calls. We'll help you fill out that paperwork. We'll talk to the folks that we know. Where we spend the day in Eastland getting people where they need to go. Because I know folks out here have that need. The thing that is the most exciting to me about this grant is that it offers the opportunity for us to pay for training for people in the community to be able to offer something that's called respite care. The United States average right now is $8,000 a month for someone to be cared for in the nursing home. <coughs> how difficult it is for a caregiver who is especially homebound because the person that they love, that they're caring for, is homebound. If we can form groups that will be able to go in and help caregivers step back and just take a breath. And they're there for you. They're not there for the loved one. Because the loved one's getting the best care that they can get, they have you. And now what we want to do is provide that care to you. Because you are just as important as the person that you're caring for. Because when you take care of yourself, then you can continue to take care of the person that you love. If you can sit and read to someone, or if you can sit and play cards with them, or work their remote, some of the things that we're going to teach you about, we're going to talk to you about understanding the caregiver and their loved one, and understanding the dynamic that's in the family and how to go about doing that. Lou is going to come and she's going to talk to us about disability sensitivity. Knowing how to talk to that person about what the disability is that's in their home, because like she said, sometimes it's invisible. We're going to talk to you about care tips. What, what is it that that person needs from you so that the caregiver can leave and know that everything is fine in their home? We're going to talk about what is abuse and what is not abuse. What is neglect and what is not neglect. We have some folks that are going to come in and talk to you about what the state says about this. When you should report, when you shouldn't report. Always know what it is that you're dealing with before you make a judgment call. Okay, we're also going to teach you about CPR. And the end of the grant period is the last day of August. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. At the end of the program, if you've completed all of your training, gotten your CPR, or 90% of your training, mm -hmm. gotten your CPR, you have two volunteers, and you are serving two families. There is a $5,000 pot to be divided amongst the groups that 
are able to get their caregiving program started. There is funding out there to be able to sustain your program without charging your caregiver a respite fee. But what, what we want to encourage you is to go back and talk to your Sunday school classes, um, your women's groups, uh, your whatever civic groups you're a part of, and find out if this is something that you're interested in. Um, we'll, be, we'll gladly go to you and provide that training.